I just wanted to touch base about both uh, David Brookover and Keith Carter now that we've finished both of those case studies. The problem with David Brookover is that he denies having a big idea. Um, in fact, he makes kind of a big deal at the end of that interview about uh, you know saying that when you've gotten to the point where you have an idea, uh, uh, he refers to it as you know your signature meaning more than the image itself, then you've essentially failed. Um, and I see the wisdom in that. Um, it certainly makes a certain amount of sense to see, you know, if you're an artist and you are making the same types of work over and over again, in some ways, creatively, you might be stagnating, um, in which case, you know, having a big idea could be suffocating. On the other hand, I think that uh, if you look at his work, um, I mean, he's a landscape photographer. So in some ways, a, a big idea is you know, can be as simple as just landscapes. I know that if you've, if you've kind of done some digging, you, you may have found that, that, that David Brookhover does more than just landscape photography. But it's also worth mentioning that um, David Brookhover sustains himself by having a gallery in which people walk into the gallery, look at his artwork, and then buy it. And um, you can see the artwork that's up on the walls, and a lot of it is this very large format, black and white landscape photography. Um, that being said, um, I think that there are certainly interesting things that we could take away from his discussion about how uh, kind of getting his start as a photographer in Japan influenced his aesthetic and his interest in printing on different surfaces, um, which is an interesting body of work. He doesn't talk too much about it. Uh, but the work that he does with that photo studio, Hidden Light, um, is, uh, well, I should say, the work that they do at that photo studio, Hidden Light, is, is really remarkable. Um, and um, I'll link up a video when I post this, which... Um, you may have seen, we may have watched it in class, I, I don't remember, but where um, Ted Forbes, who has the Art of Photography YouTube channel, goes and visits Hidden Light, and they make some prints together and stuff like that. And it is wild to see what uh, types of things these people get into. Uh, which brings me to that second question on the case study about Richard Jackson talking about printmaking as being a performance. Um, because I suppose it, it, it might not be immediately obvious, but if you really think about what you do when you go into the darkroom, or uh, in, in, the, in the case of if you're working digitally, what you do when you open up the photograph in Photoshop, um, it really is kind of a performance. You've got something and you need to make something out of it. Um, and, and the performance is not only in the end result, the thing that comes out the other end, but the performance is in um, your dodging and burning and your fixing of exposure and your contrast and all of that stuff. It's, um, and, and you could extrapolate that as, as far as you want, um, you know, making a painting, spending 15 to 20 hours working with acrylics and making a painting is kind of like having a performance. Um, and so I just, that was an interesting uh, thing for Richard Jackson to say, um, and of course he's talking about palladium printing where everything happens very fast, so it kind of takes a lot of rehearsal and then, you know, the actual kind of act of doing it needs to be, um, needs to be really uh, rehearsed and practiced. Um, so obviously it makes sense in that context, but um, I do think we should kind of think about the work that we do as being a performance as well, because um, in, in many in many ways it is. Uh, so even though David Brookover is kind of shy about having a big idea, I think if you look at the work, um, you'll find one. And I don't think there's anything too bad about having a big idea. I think part of what we're learning throughout these case studies is that having a big idea does not mean that your all of your photographs are going to look the same. Um, it just means that, uh, and this is what artists do, um, they have something that drives them, some kind of internal motivation, and they find new creative ways to explore that um, 
in their artwork. So while you might have a lot of different looking artwork, um, they do kind of all come back to the same idea or a similar idea, some iteration or evolution of the idea. That's part of what we should be taking away from all this.